On January 5, 2005, American astronomer Michael E. Brown of Caltech, Princeton, and Berkeley, with fellow astronomers David L. Rabinowitz of Yale University and the University of Arizona, and Chad Trujillo of the University of Hawaii, Gemini Observatory, and Northern Arizona University, were given credit for their discovery of a planetoid they called Eris, at the time the largest dwarf planet known in the solar system. The astronomical team actually discovered Eris in 2003, but its relatively small size and distance from Earth required rigid documentation for the discovery to be accepted. Eris is larger than Pluto, the dwarf planet that used to be considered just a planet from its discovery in 1930 until the discovery of Eris and other heavenly bodies in our solar system beyond the orbit of Neptune. With the discovery of Eris and other objects orbiting the Sun at distances beyond Neptune, Pluto was downgraded from a planet to a dwarf planet, along with Eris and other such objects. Digging deeper, we find that Eris is more than a fourth more massive than Pluto, although Pluto has more volume than Eris. So astronomers were faced with possibly calling Eris a planet or creating a new genre of heavenly bodies. Brown and his colleagues argued that because the orbits these space rocks make are not on the same plane as the orbit of the other eight planets, they should not be considered planets, but should be called dwarf planets instead. Eris and Pluto are to be found in the so-called Kuiper Belt, a ring of objects such as comets, meteors, and asteroids, as well as dwarf planets that orbit the Sun beyond the orbit of Neptune. The objects found in the Kuiper Belt are made of a variety of materials, such as ice, rock, and iron. Objects found in the Kuiper Belt are referred to by scientists as trans-Neptunian objects, or more familiarly as TNOs. Such objects are referred to as plutoids in lieu of being called dwarf planets. Brown, Rabinowitz, and Trujillo worked together on the Quasar Equatorial Survey Team, a collaboration of Yale University, Indiana University, and Centro de Investigaciones de Astronomía of Venezuela. These astronomers were at work mapping objects in space through the use of ultra-high-tech cameras and telescopes, and from 2003 to 2007, they used the 48-inch Samuel Ocean Telescope at the Palomar Observatory. Since 2009, they have used the 1-meter ESO Schmidt Telescope located in Chile. Camera work is accomplished using digital cameras in an array of 112 charge-coupled devices. When the debate about downgrading Pluto to a lesser status as a dwarf planet raged among the astronomers of the world, many fiercely defended Pluto as being a true planet. Ah, but people are so attached to the familiar. The new discoveries of Eris and other TNOs more or less necessitated a rethinking of how we view our solar system, and the dwarf planet genre became the accepted way of describing Pluto and Eris. The author of the article this video is based on is happy to have fewer planets to memorize, as he has too many things to remember as it is. Eris has a diameter of about 2,326 kilometers and takes a whopping 558 Earth years to orbit the Sun. Compared to the mean density of the Earth, 5.5 grams per cubic centimeter, Eris is less dense with a mean density of only 2.52 grams per cubic centimeter. The total mass of Eris is less than a fourth of that of the Moon. Eris was at first believed to have a slightly larger diameter than Pluto, but later calculations proved Eris has a diameter slightly less than that of Pluto. Scientists at NASA were inclined at first to call Eris the 10th planet, but scientific debate came up with the dwarf planet label instead. In spite of its relatively small size like the Earth, Eris also has a single moon orbiting it. So why did it take so long for us to discover Eris? Because Eris is an incredible three times farther away from the Sun than Pluto, a distance measured as 96.3 astronomical units. 
An astronomical unit is defined as 8.95 times 10 to the ninth power miles. You can do the math if you would like. The mathematics involved in studying various photos of space and the relationship of objects that can be seen and not seen is mind-boggling. When the term rocket scientist is used to describe a genius, it probably includes astronomers in that grouping. As they used to say on the television show Star Trek, space is the final frontier with an untold amount of facts, figures, and things yet to be discovered. Will we ever travel through space like the Starship Enterprise? Probably not in my lifetime, but perhaps in yours. As a question for my students and subscribers, have you ever heard of Eris? Were you aware of the designation of dwarf planet for Pluto? Do you believe humans will land safely on Mars in your lifetime? How many years do you think it will be before humans can safely leave our solar system? Please let us know in the comment section below this video. If you like this video and would like to receive notification of new videos, please feel welcome to subscribe to History and Headlines and become one of our patrons. Your viewership is much appreciated. Thank mm -hmm. you.